Okay, new plan. Uh, this is the MPPT charge controller for my camper. Uh, I've sort of given up for now decoding the data stream. Uh, it's just beyond my skill level right now, to be honest. Uh, I can't seem to figure out the registers and, or what it's talking, but I did get it working with Windows uh, with the factory software that they gave me. So uh, I'm gonna cheat. Um, that panel looks easily removable. Four wires to it, RX, TX, ground and power. I say we just make a remote and uh, we just remote mount the thing and move that panel inside the camper and put this down in the hold where we don't have to listen to the fan screaming and when we're at full full tilt. So I don't know. Uh, the question is, is how far can we go um, without the line loss in this wire being too much for the RX and TX? I have no idea, but uh, let's find out. This episode brought to you in part by PCB Way. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts, and assembly, as well as 24 seven tracking of your order from start to finish. I should probably just invest in a better pair of crimpers. This is pretty fiddly, but one done. Okay, that's a, a brute force approach, but it's fully functional. Uh, I gave myself quite a bit of cable there and we can still move through the menus and yeah, no problem. So what I'll do is I'll pop this sucker out of here, take some measurements, uh, make a 3D printed enclosure for it. And then I can mount this inside my camper and uh, we'll put this down in the hold with the batteries. There's a, a wide open, this thing, uh, when I'm making a kilowatt nearly, or like a three quarter of a kilowatt, this fan's probably gonna be screaming. But that should be, I'll measure it and I'll post uh, the length down below and I'll post all my files in my GitHub like I usually do. So uh, anyone else that gets these pretty awesome controllers can do this mod. This is easier than messing around with another Arduino. This, I, I should have just did this in the first place, but that was, that could have been pretty fun to do the RS485 out of here and then use like one of these ESP32 displays. Or what I, what I really thought about would be to use uh, an e-paper display and then just update it every, I don't know, like minute or so. And then I, our, our current draw would be next to nothing. But this LCD is probably pretty, pretty minimal. But our voltage reading is matching what's coming off my bench power supply feeding this. Everything's uh, hunky-dory. Uh, that's just wonderful. Uh, I didn't even put the ferrite back on it. It had a uh, uh, had a uh, um, noise suppressor on there. Um, I mean, I probably have another one I can put in place, but I think we'll just pop that out of there and see what we can do. Bye.
first draft right off the printer fits perfectly. I, I couldn't ask for any better than that. It's a perfect fit. Wow. That worked awesome. And the base for the new relocating device coming off. This filament, this was cheap from Amazon. I took a, a flyer to try it. I normally don't. Check out how good that's printing. That is smooth. Uh, really, really cool for a PLA Plus. I'm happy. Oh, check that out. Thing of beauty. I just couldn't be happier with how some of these prints are coming out lately. So that should uh, hopefully do the trick. And this is where we end up. After a bunch of time in Fusion 360, we have several iterations at a case. This is based on my um, my basic case that I use for everything that's just parameterized. Thank you, Noe and Pedro from Adafruit for publishing that. Again, it's, a, it's just theirs. So uh, I iterated a fair bit on the different button patterns and a few different things started to make my custom plug so that we can get the wiring out of there without it having to cut a hole in the case. And this is my final design as we sit right now. Um, pretty darned cool. Uh, I think this is basically a perfect fit. I think we should be good. We've got wall mount holes, room to get our ribbon cable out, and uh, we should be away. I am super, super pleased with this. This is this is a better solution than coming up with another display. This way we have no more power consumption on the camper than what would have already been there anyway to run this from the actual charge control. So yeah, we should be good. Just need to put some inserts in the back here and bolt it down and we're away to the races. this morning is solar charge control kits. Now, the hardest part of these kits is not the enclosure. Well, it was to design. The hardest part is actually these JST cables. And uh, I am I finally learned how to crimp these properly, which is pretty cool considering I showed in a video uh, how not to do it, I think. To do them so that I can sell them, I wanted something to seal them up. And this is an old trick I've used years ago. Um, I haven't used this Goop Max, but I've used automotive Goop glue in the past. And it leaves this awesome, clear, semi-soft glue forever. Kind of similar to the consistency of hot glue, but it's crystal clear. And it soaks in. It's a little runny uh, initially anyway. And it, it flows into connectors and permanently seals them up. So what I do with these type of cables is just put a little layer and let them cure up uh, for a few hours, flip it over, put another layer and let it cure up and then it's permanently bonded. And then I can go ahead and send these out without concern that someone's going to reef the terminals right out of them because they don't know how 
sensitive JST cables can be. So pretty cool, uh, learn something new every day. finishing touch on these. This will be cool to put above the LCD mount, eh? That's nifty. 